Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for taking the time today to join us for another Moonblink uh, webinar. My name is Travis Hawthorne, and I am Moonblink's marketing coordinator. Today, we'll be providing an overview of FireTide's wireless solutions for the education market, and my company, Moonblink, is a distributor for FireTide. Um, on the line, we have Matt McCluskey, FireTide's wireless LAN sales manager, who will demonstrate how FireTide and their products are a great fit for many school campuses. He'll go through real-world deployments and go in-depth among one school in particular, the uh, Archbishop um, McCarthy High School, which is utilizing FireTide's products to provide internet connectivity among the entire campus and accommodating over 1,000 iPads. Um, now I'm going to let Matt continue on with the remainder of the presentation. If anyone does have any questions throughout the webinar, um, please type them in the Q&A box towards the bottom right of your screen and then we'll make sure to provide time at the end of the presentation to go over those. Um, so with, Matt, uh, with that, Matt, uh, I'll, I'll let you begin. Thanks, Travis. Uh, good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody can hear me all right. If you can't, send a message into the Q&A so we know ahead of time. Um, like Travis said, I'm Matt McCluskey here with FireTide. Uh, we're going to kind of start off and do a little brief overview of FireTide, uh, a brief overview of the complete product lines from the infrastructure to access and network management. Then we're going to go into a, um, like Travis said, one particular school. We'll kind of give an in-depth on some of the challenges they had, uh, why they selected FireTide, and what some of the results have been so far. Okay, so FireTide's headquartered in Los Gatos, California. We also have research and development in India. We are number one in the Americas in wireless mesh infrastructure for public safety and video surveillance with over 3,000 installations in 40 countries worldwide. The leading provider of wireless infrastructure and network solutions. A brief timeline of the history of FireTide, and just like I said, in case anybody hasn't been familiar with FireTide in the past, we were founded in 2003 and submitted our first patent the same year. In 2004, we had our first generation infrastructure mesh product. In 2006, we were up to our fourth generation infrastructure product, the Hotport 6000 series. By 2007, we introduced the industry's first mobile infrastructure. And in 2008, we introduced our access point or hot point uh, product line that we're going to be talking about today. In 2010, we released our fifth generation infrastructure mesh product, the hot port 7000 series. And in 2007, we achieved profitability. Right here, you're going to have a brief list of some of our customers uh, ranging in deployments from DOTs, video public safety, uh, we've done some flood management, schools for access. Uh, mostly here you're going to see video and access. So we've got Wi-Fi on the trains, mobility applications, things like that. Right now we have an overview of the complete product portfolio. So starting on the left side, we have the hot port infrastructure mesh products, uh, our wireless bridge product, so a point-to-point -point product. And then if you were going to do a mobility solution with those infrastructure mesh products, we have a mobility controller for that. Otherwise, stationary, like for video surveillance applications on light poles, things like that. All of those products are managed with our HotView Pro network management software. The HotView Pro software can also manage the access line or our access point line. So on the access side, we have our hot point access points, which we'll be talking about hot client CPEs and then uh, two versions of our wireless LAN controller. Our APs can work in standalone mode or with a controller, so you don't have to be tied to a controller if you don't want to. The controller adds extra features that you wouldn't get in standalone mode, but it's an option for people who would like to manage maybe via the cloud in a piece of software. You could use HotView Pro instead of a controller. We also, we also offer professional services that include site surveys, design, installation, commissioning, knowledge transfer, and training. We can go a little bit more in-depth here on the FireTide Access products. Best total cost of ownership, field-tested security features, high availability, complete indoor and outdoor product line, 
and optimize for video performance. We've basically taken a lot of the code that we have from our hot port mesh infrastructure products that have been optimized for video, and we've included that into our access point line. So when we're going to start talking about our some of our iPad deployments and video over the FireTide access point line, that's where we're getting the optimized video. First, we're going to talk about the Hot Point 5000 access points. We have an indoor and outdoor version of these. Both are dual radio, 3x3 three three MIMO. The picture you have there on the right side, that's an outdoor, it would be called a 5200, so that's the outdoor ruggedized AP there. Central management through the uh, wireless LAN controller. As mentioned, you could also use Hotview Pro if you wanted to do standalone with the APs. Up to 200 megabits of end user throughput. More users served with a fewer number of APs. Each radio, so they're dual radio, but each radio can handle up to 64 users, so 128 per AP. The Hot Point 4100 access points right there pictured on your uh, on your left. These are indoor only access points. High power 400 milliwatts. 32 clients is the max there with 30 megabits of end user throughput. We're going to talk about the FWC 1000 controller. This controller is capable of handling 50 APs at a time and 2,000 clients. This controller is non-stackable. The next controller we're going to talk about is stackable and expandable out or over 50 APs. Seamless level 3 mobility, uh, automatic AP discovery, channel management and assignment, self-healing, and there's a ton of other features. If there's specific features that you want to ask questions about, we can get into that a little bit more in depth. We're just going to give a brief overview of some of the features and then when we go to the 2000, everything that's mentioned in the 1000 is also in the 2000. These are some of the ads though for the 2000. Stackable and expandable up to 150 APs. Active Directory. Remote AP support. So we do this basically by if you have let's say a district office and you want to have APs throughout several different schools. As long as you can establish a VPN connection to the other schools, you can have one controller at a central head end like a district office and then you can manage APs remotely from anywhere in the district that you would like or anywhere anywhere that you like. LDAP support. Redundancy, so you can have one controller back up up to three controllers. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Archbishop McCarthy High School um, deployment that we have here. So we're going to get more in detail on some of the things that they're doing. Founded in 97 in South Ranches, Florida. They have a total of 1,525 students. Here's some of the um, objectives that they wanted to uh, complete here when they just started, started deploying a year ago. They wanted to decrease school expenses. They wanted an integrated infrastructure and an immersive learning experience. So they wanted teachers to be able to respond real time to students and students to have real time access to learning materials. Some of the challenges, completely covering the entire indoor campus. The, they are, at this school, they're only doing indoor coverage for this. So they want all the students while they're in classrooms, everywhere inside to be able to access their iPads. Right now we're supporting more than a thousand iPads with 35 access points in 13 buildings. Scalable, so actually they're building new buildings so they'll be expanding onto this, so we wanted to be able to mention that. Safer environment for the students. Um, Basically, I mean, they do content control this so the students can't get out to anything that they want, so they can manage what the students are viewing. And a few more of the requirements. They wanted to be able to have the lowest total cost of ownership. They wanted to individualize learning curriculum for classes uh, per student if necessary, like I mentioned, content control. And they wanted to have every student on an iPad-based learning. They wanted to be able to get rid of books. Um, they wanted to have basically a paperless environment for the school. The brief quote from the principal 
Um, you guys can read it there. I can kind of summarize it. Uh, but basically, what he's saying is, is that FireTide was able to demonstrate real-world working solutions, uh, fewer access points for the entire school than other vendors may have uh, provided or suggested to them. But I'll leave this up for a brief second, and if anybody wants to read the actual quote. And I saw a question pop up just to answer your question, a question Shannon. Uh, through the FireTide controller, uh, the content control and web page filtering is not done. That's, uh, I believe they're using Barracuda Networks, but I can get back to you on that one. Going to go on to the next slide. FireTide solution. Students are able to use the iPads anywhere, anytime throughout the school. Increased motivation. Students got extremely excited when they heard that they were each going to get an iPad. <laughs> Interactive learning. So it made the classroom a little bit more fun for them. and an improved learning experience still going back to, I think that the fact that the kids thought that they were, knew they were getting an iPad kind of contributed to all of that. The outcome so far, student enrollment at the school has increased by 15%. Saved the school over $50,000 in the first year of deployment. So this starting school year will be their second school year having this system in place. Wireless network. So to build the network and the upgrade, uh, they basically, this is a private school, so they basically charged a fee on, in addition to tuition, which allowed for payment of the network and leasing of the iPad to the students. Reduce the teaching costs and parent expenses. I'm going to list off a few of the other wireless LAN deployments that we have either up and running or being deployed right now. And these aren't the only ones we have. These are just kind of a few of the education ones that we want to highlight here. Okay. Current promotions that FireTide is running on our wireless LAN access products. We have a wireless LAN starter kit which has the FWC 1000 that we mentioned and 10 of the Hotpoint 4100s. You can see the uh, promotional price and what it was previously. And then if you don't need a controller or if you already have a controller or a FireTide controller, you can get a 10-pack of those APs and you can see the prices right there. Now this was kind of short on the actual slides, but I wanted to leave time for questions. so. Let's open it up for questions now. Is that all right with you, Travis? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, looks like we have one from Carlos asking how many of the 35 APs, uh, referring to that McCarthy um, High School, um, were using MIMO, and was there any problems with 2.4 gigahertz MIMO with available channels? Hey, Carlos. Um, so all the APs were using MIMO. Um, Basically, since they're using the 5100s, they're using dual radio. Um, anywhere where there could, there's in some locations in the school or some classrooms, what they would do was uh, disable the 2.4 and only use 5 gigahertz. So, as far as everything that I know about this school being involved in it, they have not had problems with available channels. Basically, they may in some uh, locations, like high density locations, only use. 5 gigahertz or the 2.4, but most APs are running at dual radio, or running as dual radios there, so. Uh, the, uh, another question that was sent to me privately, it, it asked, uh, what factors led to the $50,000 in cost savings? As far as how, I mean, I guess is the question, how did we come up with that number? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, yeah. So, Basically, that number, I mean, a big chunk of that is books that they didn't have to buy. I mean, a huge chunk of that is books that they did not purchase this year, or I'm sorry, last year when they first implemented. Okay. Um, another question is, um, is FireTide a viable solution to cover an outdoor 
an indoor campus with a variety of network traffic, for example, security, remote POS, and educational materials? The answer is yes. So indoor and outdoor, if you were, I mean, if you wanted an 11N solution, you would use the 5100s and then the 5200s, which are the outdoor versions of the radio, so you could do indoor-outdoor coverage easily. Um, as far as multiple applications, we're talking about the iPads there in, at McCarthy, but they also do Apple TV. Um, they don't do any remote POS, but through the controller, or you can use an outside box, um, and we done that before at hotels, educational materials, streaming video, uh, even a few deployments that uh, use just the APs to carry uh, video, you know, from like a surveillance camera traffic. So I'd, you wouldn't have a problem doing that indoor, outdoor, and basically adding any sort of IP-based traffic. I mean, obviously there's limitations to, uh, you know, bandwidth at some point. I mean, at some point you're going to run out of bandwidth, but as far as being able to plan that accordingly, you won't have an issue. Um, so a couple more questions. We have one from Shannon asking, um, if we wanted to reach our rural community a mile away, is there a way to provide access for them from our school? Yes. Sharon's. Basically, we didn't actually show a picture of this product, but in the infrastructure slide, we have a wireless bridge, and it's basically a point-to-point -point radio. So if you wanted to go from your school out there that didn't have any connectivity, you could use a point-to-point -point bridge and then have access points there. So if your bandwidth was, so what it sounds like is your bandwidth would basically be coming from the school and you want to share it to a rural community, you could do that with our point-to-point -point bridge or our mesh nodes and then hang access points there. Um, the other way you could do it is if you have a controller at the school and wherever in that rural community you're trying to uh, get connectivity or give Wi-Fi coverage, like I said, if you can establish a VPN connection there, you can put an access point at that location and then from the controller at the school remotely manage it. Okay. Uh, let's see, we got a few questions there. Wireless bridge uh, best is going to work best with line of sight. Um, you know, if you're doing the point-to-point -point bridge, I would recommend having line of sight, decent line of sight. Uh, the less line of sight you have, the less chance or the lower bandwidth possibly. But point, I mean, you want to have line of sight for that bridge. Uh, we have another question. Um, well, first I can answer one of them. It says, who would we contact for a quote, Moonblink or Firetide? Um, you can reach out to us at Moonblink. Um, our email and phone number is in the slide here. Um, and I'll also be pro providing a follow-up email with a PDF of the slides and um, some other material so you can respond to that. Yeah. Um, so I see you. I'm going to answer the question from Mike here. Um, the range on the 5200 is dependent on what external antennas you're going to be using. So with the 5100s, that's the indoor version of the radio, they come with antennas that are 3.5 dB on 2, 4, and 5 gigahertz, and that's what almost every single one of our indoor deployments use. They don't normally purchase external antennas. For the 5200s, you can kind of go with whatever external antennas you want in the 2, 4, or 5 gig um, spectrum. So we've got schools or other deployments that use omnidirectional antennas and we get, I mean we've done testing where up to a thousand feet from the clients can still get connected. If you're using a sector or a panel antenna that's obviously going to increase a little bit because you're focused in a certain direction. Um, some of the schools that are doing indoor and outdoor might mount an outdoor AP just on the side of a building and then do a sector antenna to give coverage in like a quad area. So you're going to get a little farther range there than you would with the Omni antennas. But, um, you know, Firetide has a whole list of antennas that we can suggest as well as Moonblink. So uh, I guess we would have to we'd have to kind of get into that with what antennas or what, uh, what you're trying to accomplish for an exact distance on the 5200s. Okay, we have another question. Uh, do you know or have speed benchmarks 
um, to run educational applications like Skype or YouTube or, or anything else? Um, will your speed support many of these key applications that educators are using in the classroom? So I don't have exact numbers on the uh, speed benchmarks, but I know that at McCarthy they're allowed to use YouTube. I know that um, as far as Skype's concerned, I use it daily for video in the office here, and it's only running our access points. Um, I don't know if they're using Skype at McCarthy, but I know that they do use YouTube. Uh, so can we support it? Yeah. Um, it, I haven't seen that being an issue as far as us not being able to ever provide enough bandwidth for somebody. Okay, so we've got Mike here. Plus minus between fire tide and fiber optic cable. So, I mean, the, the big plus here on fiber, I mean, I guess between fire tide and fiber optic cable, when we're, when we're talking about the access solutions is, is, I mean, for me and from what I've seen in the schools is they want to be able to give students the mobility. I mean, if you can take your iPad all around and you don't have to do, or it doesn't have to be an iPad, it could be a laptop, it could be any device, not having to be chained to a wire, but as far as fiber, I mean, if you're going to have fiber coming in from somewhere, I'm sure, at the head end of the school, um, you're talking. If you're talking about like the uh, infrastructure products on the point-to-point -point or the mesh stuff, again, I mean, it's wireless versus wired. Um, you know, if you, if you want to have wireless connectivity, you know, not being plugged in anything, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, I guess that's kind of a, as far as security features the. Uh, Infrastructure products are extremely secure. Um, same with the access products, but we have a couple additional versions of the infrastructure product that are actually FIPS certified, so kind of gives you that extra layer of security. But um, I guess, I mean, the biggest difference is we're wireless compared to wire, so you want to be able to have that access anywhere and not be tied to somewhere, you know, somewhere. An outdoor museum campuses. <laughs> Good point, too, no trenches. Um, as far as I know, we have not done an outdoor museum campus with the access products, the access point products. We may have some mesh deployments for video surveillance in an outdoor museum. That's something that I can check for you, Mike. I don't know that answer off the top of my head. But as far as the access point products, uh, as far as I know, we don't have a Wi-Fi deployment. But there is a very good chance that we have video deployments in an outdoor museum. So we'll give a couple more minutes for uh, questions to come through. It looks like uh, most of them dried up. Yeah, hopefully I didn't go through too quickly for anybody, but we can definitely go more in depth on products or if there's features that people want to know, you know, that we support. You know, feel free to ask. Yeah, we did go quickly today. Must have been that extra cup of coffee that I had. <laughs> Um, so if there's no more questions, um, I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. Um, appreciate all you guys attending, and uh, Matt, I appreciate you for taking time out to, uh, uh, to go through all this information. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, before I follow up to you guys with the follow-up email, um, you can uh, reach out to uh, Matt or us. Um, emails are on the, on the screen there, and phone numbers are available too. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, thanks, thanks for everyone for attending. Yeah, thank you guys very much for taking the time to attend today. I hope it was informative.